Okay, we'll now call the regular meeting of Hanwell Council to order for February 21st, uh, 2024. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda, please? I move to approve the agenda <coughs> with the following amendment, adding 11C, Hanwell Days Committee. Seconder? I'll second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those contrary minded? Motion carried. Thank you, Council. We need the uh, motion to adopt the minutes for uh, January 17th meeting. I'll move to adopt the minutes of the January 17th, January 17th meeting of regular meeting of council. Also. Questions, comments, any errors, omissions, anybody's aware of? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Thank you. Motion carried. Now, item four, public input. Uh, we have some inquiries on, I believe, something on the on-site the premises. Yes. So I'll give you the floor, sir. Uh, <laughs> you can either stand up or sit down, wherever, whatever you're most comfortable doing. Um, I'll sit, thanks. Uh, my cons one, several concerns. Uh, one being, I was totally unaware of what was going on until I found it by accident online that, that the motion was going to be third reading tonight. Uh, I think you need to get the information out to the community uh, in a better manner somehow. Um, the sign out front could have had a notice on it that a new bylaw was being uh, voted on or seeking to approve or what have you. Um, <clears throat> not everybody's on a computer. Uh, not everybody's on Facebook. I suggested paper posters of some kind, somehow, maybe. Um, I don't know, postage, of course, would be, a, I don't know if that would be an issue or not, whether you could print uh, papers, give them to the post office to put in our mailboxes. Nothing in here, not a thing. They, they mentioned the garbage bylaw. Yeah, but nothing about <coughs> this bylaw, on-site premises bylaw. So, as from, what I, from what I can gather and the lack of people here, uh, <clears throat> I say nobody knows anything about it. So, I think we really need to try and get the information out. And somehow, you've got to be creative. Um, whether you get a hold of everybody's email address and do a blanket email, what have you. Um, something that needs to be done. And... <clears throat> The, uh, I tried looking up the existing bylaw to see what the difference was between this and the proposal, and on our website I couldn't find it. The Hanwell website, I had to go to the provincial website, and that leads you down the garden path quite a ways before you find out anything at all. Uh, it's quite a read. Um, there are some, I noticed a couple of changes there. Other question was who is going to be the uh, enforcement officer? Is it a provincial person or a local person that's going to enforce these bylaws? Because it will, you'll have to create another position if it isn't already created <clears throat> for someone to administer this regulation. So. Uh, um, it would probably be better if we had somebody local that understands the community, as opposed to somebody from the glass house downtown who's just coming out here, holy jeez, I got a complaint and I got to hit it hard with a hammer. Um, so there's that, that concern. Uh, another concern is the, uh, uh, the way the bylaw, bylaw is written, there is no recourse for the owner of any kind. Bylaw officer walks in, says, you can't do that, writes you whatever form, and that's it. I'll give you 10 days, I'll give you two months, whatever, to do whatever you have to do to get rid of this, or the justice, or whatever it has to be done. And after that, the minimum fine is $1,000 per day until the issue is resolved. And you have no recourse. So this is something I really have a problem with. I can work with somebody on something. 
But boys, when you come to my yard and start telling me what I can do and what I can't do, that's another issue altogether. That's not going to fly. Uh, talk to anybody about just about anything, but don't force me into stuff. And the rest of these people here, I think, are of the same thinking. So, uh, those are my major concerns about it. Yeah. Uh, there was a change also that's... Oh, geez, I've got on my phone somewhere. Uh, on the provincial side, it said that the act was amended only to cover salvage yards. What was that? The act has been modified to cover only salvage yards. I think it's a mistake. So, there's an issue there of some sort. <clears throat> yeah, that's the first time I heard that. That's something I'm definitely checking out. Yeah. yeah. Did I've you got it on my phone here if you want. Yeah. Did you have anything else to add? Uh, probably 50 things, but. Okay. Yeah. Uh, somebody else can speak. Yeah. <laughs> we'll certainly take your comments under advisement. No question about that. Uh, just for information purposes, Hanwell's been under this, the same on-site premises act since, what, 2015? Yeah, I wasn't aware that there was one brought in. Yeah. It's the same. We've had it since, I think... <coughs> November 19, 2016. 2016. Yeah. And it refers to the same sections in the act that the yeah. bylaw that's now going under Kings, the area that used to be Kingsley. Yeah. Now, it's the same act, and it was the only thing different is Hanwell would administer it versus the province administer it. Kingsley was under the provincial act since the uh, on-site premises has been rendered. It's the same as Hanwell was before we had our own bylaw. And our bylaw just refers to the provincial bylaw. Yeah. So it, the Kingsley area that became part of Hanwell was already under the on-site premises act, same act as we have under the province. Under the province. Yeah, okay. but the only thing different is the administration on it. Okay. And as far as the enforcement goes, is we contract out to the Regional Service Commission, and they have an enforcement officer that will go around. Oh, okay. And there's, like I said, they when they do it, if, again, on-site premises is very subjective. What might be on-sitely to me may not be on-sitely to you. So it's, well, it's, it's, it's the description in, in the act, it, it, or the bylaw, is, is uh, pretty vague. What's that? Pretty vague. It's, well, it's, it's, very, that, it's, it's quite vague. It's quite vague. have yeah. a pile of ashes. Yeah. And the only time that it's going to be brought to our attention is if somebody complains. Yes. And that'll be somebody from your local area that's going to be complaining. It might be your neighbor, it might be yeah. a guy down the street or yeah. whatever. So that's, we're not out looking. I mean, yeah. there's no one here or the bylaw officer's not out looking for well, my point is, infractions of the bylaw. If the bylaw officer shows up, I have, I'm the, I have no recourse. Yeah, but the bylaw officer... I try to talk to him. Yeah, but he no. would work with you on how to clean it up or how to alleviate the problem. Mm. And it's a, it's a long process. It doesn't it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. And the bylaw officer, I've, I've known circumstances that he's been out to, and they give them all kinds of leeway to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. either you know clean it up, make it on site, yeah. put it in the backyard, yeah. whatever. There's all kinds of ways, and the bylaw officer is more than willing to work with you on that. Yeah, see, uh, like if you had uh, some vehicles for parts or what have you in your yard, at the back of your yard, say, and you can see them from the road, it's okay to put a fence around them. Again, that would be up to the bylaw officer, but I, he'll work with the person or people, you know, <laughs> to resolve the problem. There's no doubt about that. Most business people have some sort of mess in their yard. You can't yeah. operate a business without a mess. Yeah, especially, so you speak. know. Yeah. You know, whether it's a pile of lumber or a pallet full of nails sitting in the yard or what have you. Trucks, cars, lawnmowers, you know. Yeah. I think it's, you know, again, it has to come from a complaint, yeah. and the bylaw officer would, would investigate it. He may deem it frivolous, which in some oh, cases okay. they are, because, like I said, some, somebody may be complaining just for the sake of complaining. Right. Or maybe it may be a personal thing, it may be a yeah. grudge. Who knows? That's right. But the bylaw officer is, is, you know, is, is trained in bylaw enforcement, mm -hmm. and he'd be the one to make the final call. Okay. But I, I know from, from a fact that he works with people that there has been complaints about and where he's deemed it on-site, on-sightly. And it has to be quite on-sightly before he will figure it's on-sightly also. Okay. Because, it, again, it's very subjective, right? Yeah. But we'll certainly take your comments under advisement and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you for uh, your presentation. Uh, Sir? I have a question here. Yep. What if it's a clear case of no doubt absolutely on-sightly, but nobody does anything about it? Yeah, we've got one, in fact, that's no doubt that it's completely unsightly. I'm not going to point fingers either. But, but you know, 
there seems to be a lack of any sort of enforcement. Mm -hmm. It just kind of, oh, don't talk about that. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next. Well, there, yeah, there is enforcement going on, but there's a process they have to follow. They have to be served. You usually have to contact them. So the, if it's the one I'm thinking of, very difficult to contact the person because nobody, nobody knows where they are. So that, that, that makes it difficult. Well, you know, it's more than unsightly. The situation I'm talking about is definitely dangerous yeah. and unsafe. Oh, yeah. It's, it's been a hazard for years, and it's still a hazard. It's, it's changed. But it's it's gotten it's gotten worse looking than it has gotten better looking, sure. but it's still a mess. So that's that's one that's on the books because we've had complaints about it and it's being worked on. But it's, uh, the difficulty is finding the owner. And I don't know if that's the same property you're talking about or not, yeah. but it may well be. Yeah, it's been being worked on for about 15 years. Now. Probably the same one. Yeah. Yeah. But that's where the province looked after it for their first yeah, ten years, and we've been looking after it for the last five. I mean that. Uh, it's ridiculous that it's gone on this long. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you don't have to tell me. Well, we can't do anything until this is approved. Well, the province could have thought. Yeah, so it was under the province. Now, once this is approved, then the administration of it goes over to Hanwell. Okay. So, again, we can look at it. Yeah. But before, it was had to go through the province to, the, to have a look at it. Yeah. But I know they've been working on it, and they haven't been having a whole lot of luck trying to find the owner. So, I don't know if we'll have any better luck or not. Can, can that not be deemed dangerous? In which case they could yeah. act immediately. Yeah, that's a that's, that's a possibility. In the act. Yeah, I mean somebody obviously if, uh, if a kid got involved in there and got injured or killed for yeah, sake, uh, somebody's gonna be on the hook for it. Definitely. Yeah. So and where is they're not taking any action because uh, we just can't get a hold of the owners, uh, then they're obviously off the hook. Yeah. So somebody's gonna end up bearing the. <coughs> Yeah. But they wouldn't be off the hook because eventually somebody would find them sooner or later. Anyway, yeah. it's going to, once this bylaw is passed, then it becomes Hamill's administrative problem. The so, CRA, they'll find her. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They'd find anybody. Yeah. Turn, turn them over to a, turn them over to a collection agency. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, once it becomes a bylaw for Hamill, then uh, we have the authority to look into it. And where it's dangerous, then we can act on it and send the bill to the owner. But they can actually take the bill onto the property taxes also. So it becomes a lien against the property for yeah, taxation. I saw that. Yeah, so yeah. that's, a, that's See, another thing that we can do. This is a thing that kind of worried me because there's a lot of power in that, in that act, in that bylaw, that could be abused if you had the wrong person uh, uh, enforcing it. Yeah, but where it's handles too. I mean, the the bylaw officer would give us a, a report, and you know we've got our mm -hmm. staff and whatnot that would have to agree with it, right? So there should be enough safety me mechanisms into the situation, so that it wouldn't be like somebody just running rampart over the situation. Are you allowed to modify the the uh, bylaw, or do you have to accept it as is from the province? Uh, the bylaws. It is written, and that's that's the bylaw, unless we change it. But we've had the same bylaw through here, Hanwell, for like I said, yeah. since 2016. Yeah. So we haven't changed it. We haven't had an issue with it. So. Yeah. 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 That's okay. Why, that's why I'm worried about it having too much tooth teeth. Uh, yeah. You, you know. Again, you got to be careful with. Uh, yeah. You know, with regulations, right? Yeah. They're they're meant to for everybody's benefit, not to, right. you know, exactly. to go against one person, one individual. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Sir? Uh, good evening, Council. I'm just going to pause for a minute there in case someone wants to leave the room while I'm addressing Council. <clears throat> the reason I'm here tonight is to ask the Mayor to clarify his comments he made on social media with regards to Hanwell Rural Community Garbage Collection Service. About a week ago, you posted a Q&A document. One of the questions piqued my curiosity. Was Council aware that BMI didn't have lifts? Why ask that question? I don't know. The answer, in the past we had confirmed that not all feral trucks had mechanical arm, uh, lift arms and there was no guarantee that the truck would be equipped with one. So yesterday I checked again and I noticed yesterday that the garbage collection, that same document has been changed, uh, been replaced by a new one, a redacted version. 
And the question and answer I just stated is no longer there. I, want, I was just wondering why it was removed. Do you want me to answer? I'm going to well, turn that over to the, the mayor. Yeah, but the mayor, again, is not right up to, uh, obviously there's been a change. I didn't make oh, the it was change. Your name, it was your name on the bottom of the sheet. That's why I thought maybe it was, yeah. you, you were changed. Possibly. But there was, if there was a change, I'm going to pass it over to the CAO because well, I'm aware of a change, but at the time we wrote that, there was a BMI or the FARO did not have a, couldn't guarantee an arm, but they, since they have guaranteed an arm. But at the, at the time that we thought, when, we, when that document was written, it was based on old information. So now we have new information, that's why it was changed. But I'm going to turn it over to the CAO where she made the change, and that's, that's what's known to me. So. I don't think I'm too far out on that one. Or, no. Yeah. So um, we used a uh, uh, question and answer from two or three years ago when BMI first took on the garbage contract in Hanwell. So I used the same answers. Then I was speaking to Pharaoh, and he said that all the trucks now have the lifts. So I said, oh, I said, well, I will take that down. So I removed that part of it. But so, back, so basically... Back when we did it, when okay. so we did it So basically the Q&A was based on outdated information. Correct. I, I, okay. Yeah. All right. For that question. I would, because I was even... Why, why even make the comment that not all ferro trucks have mechanical lifts, darns, when it's not a requirement in the tender? Correct. Okay, so in, in other words, you could have also stated in the past, we had confirmed that not all Faro trucks were red, and Faro couldn't guarantee that they could supply a red truck. It would have been about the same. Probably, but people weren't asking about a red truck. People were asking about a mechanical arm. Okay, so people were asking about the mechanical arms. Okay. All right. Every day, you hear government stating, we have to reduce pollution and reduce our single plastic usage. When you go to the grocery store, they use paper bags instead of plastic. Even Schultons is doing their part. They have replaced their plastic lids for their coffee cups with a non-plastic version. The worst part is that I have to put those paper bags and non-plastic coffee cup lids in a plastic bag so they can be brought to the landfill <coughs> instead of just loose in my garbage can dolly. Same scenario applies for a lot of other items, styrofoam, packing peanuts, etc. It's been a proven, it has been proven that the use of mechanical lift arms in the collection of garbage does reduce the amount of single-use plastic garbage bags going into the landfill. I can personally attest that I've been using twice as much, if not more, plastic bags since BMI has been providing garbage collection compared to the previous company using the mechanical arms. One would think that a community with a motto inspired by nature, would be at the forefront in trying to reduce the pollution, or is this motto just a good catchphrase? I was going to contact the NB Green Party candidate for Hanwell, New Maryland, to see if, elect, if elected the Green Party candidate would work on putting procedures, rules, recommendations in place to limit the needless amount of plastic garbage bags going in the landfill. To my surprise, the NB Green Party candidate for Hanwell, Maryland is none other than our very own Deputy Mayor, Susan Joan. I did not know that. One would have to expect the Green Party candidate would be all for reducing pollution. Did Council discuss and decide what Council wanted as far as requirements for the garbage tender, or was it left to the discretion of someone else to write up the tender? Did you guys like me? This is what we want in this far as the tender? Or somebody else just, this is what we always wrote? No, we, we did discuss it at council. Pr prior to yes. submitting the tender? Exactly. Okay. When was that? A couple of meetings ago, before we, before we put the tender out anyway. Okay. At an admin meeting or? No, council meeting. At a council meeting? Yeah. No, I, been, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't been, recall it might have been a seeing management. any of the council meetings with yeah. that. It might have been a management discussion. meeting. It, it, been a, what? it might have been a management meeting. I don't recall. Oh, management meeting. Yeah. Oh, which isn't to the public. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. recorded. And yeah, it's recorded. Uh, which one was it? You... I'm not sure exactly which one it was. You put the tender out 
It was before the tender. No, it has to be before the tender. You can't discuss it after you've made it. Yeah. Well, no one. Yeah, and we also, um, I used the tender <coughs> documents that had come from the province that was part of their <coughs> contract for the Kingsclear LSD. And we had put in, like, an arm would be an asset. Continuing on, there are some from Hamill Rural Community <coughs> that would try to make you believe that it is Fredericton Regional Solid Waste that requires a rural community to ensure that all garbage be in plastic bags. Fredericton Solid Waste was contacted and that is not the case. As a matter of fact, the use of plastic bags in a landfill is a concern of a lot of people. There are some also from Hanwell Rural Community that would try to make you believe that garbage should be in plastic bags and not loose to avoid items flying out of the trailer or truck as it goes down the road. I would refer you to the New Brunswick Motor Vehicle Act, Section 256.1, which states that it is an offense for a driver of a motor vehicle not to properly secure their load in order to prevent any part of the load from escaping. On several occasions, I have witnessed paper and other items flying out of the BMI trailer as it goes down the road because a proper tarp was not installed to prevent this from happening. Also, a few large garbage bags have been seen along Route 640 on garbage collection days. According to witnesses, they seen these come out of BMI trailer. I did not personally witness that. There are some from Hanwell Rural Community that are concerned that not every resident can afford a dolly garbage can to be used with lift arms. I respect that concern, but the cost to purchase extra plastic bags without using lift arms, soon makes up the cost of the dolly garbage can. Hanwell Rural Community could even purchase these dolly cans, garbage cans, in bulk and sell them to residents to offset the cost. This could be an excellent, let's do our part to reduce single-use plastic in our landfill. Furthermore, requirement of mechanical arms in the tender would not stop the garbage disposal company from picking up garbage manually as it was done before BMI took over when the residents didn't have a dolly garbage can to use with mechanical arms. So buying a garbage dolly can can then at that point come, become a new issue. There are some from Hano that would also say that they are trying to keep the cost down by not going with mechanical arms as a prerequisite. Let's just say for instance the difference in cost between using lift arms and not was $90,000. Divide that by 2,850 houses, more or less, that would increase the yearly tax, property tax by a mere $31 a house. Not Now the big question, is $31 more a year in property taxes too much of an amount to pay to reduce annual rural communities needless pollution with extra single-use garbage bags in the landfill? Why hasn't Hanwell Rural Community done some sort of town hall meeting to find out what the residents want with regards to garbage collection? It's been a controversy for the last couple of years since BMI took over. Council is elected to represent the residents, not dictate to the residents. This is what council has decided. This is what we're doing. On the subject of cost, now let's compare the added cost of garbage collection against the Hanwell Rural Community Salaries. I've recently been made aware that Hanwell Rural, Rural Community CAO annual salary is close or maybe even more than that of the CEO of the City of Moncton. This is the largest city in the province of New Brunswick. I understand that the, Hanwell, the CEO's position was only created in October of 2023 with the amalgamation <coughs> But for a small rural community such as Hanwell to pay one person an annual salary between $84,000 and $99,000 a year sounds a bit much. As we all know, the CEO was awarded the position without any job advertisement or competition because it was a political appointment. Possibly when the CEO retires, which according to her will be before the next municipal election, Hanwell Rural Community may be in a position to look at the CEO's annual salary to be more fitting of a rural community that size of Hanwell. Any questions, Mr. Mayor? None.
No. Any other comments? All right. <coughs> well, thank everybody for their uh, comments. I, I oh, have, yes. By I all means. have seen uh, a garbage company hauling bags of garbage in the back of the truck because the trailer's already full with no tarp or net. The garbage uh, trailer should have a, a proper net over top of it when the door is closed, but when they move from one driveway to another, they don't close the door because they're just idling along the edge of the road and they jump out, grab the bag, throw it in. Hopefully it goes in far enough and doesn't roll back out. So no system is perfect. Uh, if you want to eliminate plastic bags and, you, and handle loose garbage, you will need a packer truck and you will need an arm. Because God knows what people put in their garbage cans, but some of them weigh 10 pounds and some of them weigh 100 pounds. So for that reason, you would need some an arm, a mechanical arm, to lift it in. But you would have to put it into a packer so that it couldn't blow out because it's loose garbage. You could have paper, you could have God knows what. But it has to be in a solid contained area for it to work. Just my two cents worth. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay, good. Moving on. Item five, disclosures. We, are, we do have some conflicts tonight for, uh, for, uh, for closed session, I believe, right? So we're, we're good for the regular council meeting. Yeah. Okay. And reports from the fire department. Do we have to declare it there? They declare it now? Okay, so if anybody's going to declare for the closed session, they should declare it now. Do I just read it? No, you can just say. Oh, I declare on conflict of interest with item... Um, 19. Item 19D under closed session. The same as off. Yeah. Okay. Any other conflicts of interest? Okay. Thank you. So we'll look after that when we move into closed session. Okay. Item 6, uh, Fire Department. Chief Krause, you're up. Yes, good evening. <coughs> Mayor, Council, members of the public. Everyone got the other two copies of uh, mm -hmm. for December. Oh no! Oh, you, did, you, did. you got them. I do have them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, moving along, <coughs> this is for uh, January, and we had fourteen calls. Any questions? Everyone get a chance to look at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Typical for January, most of the MBAs. Yeah, most months. Mm -hmm. Actually, actually it was down. And <clears throat> a lot of that is lack of snow. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Don't say anything. <laughs> no. Say a word. Yeah, or freezing rain. That that usually uh, ups uh, the, the calls. We get two people are halfway through their firefighter one program. We done. Uh, <clears throat> had a cottage with that we uh, got to do live fire training on the weekend. Got some sign offs for those people doing the level one along. Of course, everyone gets their hands in it when you're doing it. But it went well, and so. Okay, any other questions for the Chief? No. Okay. Thank you, Chief, for your information. Timely as usual. Can I get a motion to receive the fire department report? Motion to receive fire department report. Second. Second. Any questions? Any more questions, comments? <coughs> Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary reminded. Motion carried. Thank you, Council. Moving on to item seven. We have a presentation from uh, Mr. Nicholson, I believe. Is he with us tonight? No? No. 
I thought, I thought the gentleman in the back might have been. No, no. I don't know the gentleman myself. I know he was supposed to be here for a presentation. So I'm not sure on that one. We might have put him off to the next council meeting. Yeah, he should be here by now, for sure. Yeah. Okay, moving on to item 8. We've had a... Oh, you folks are more than welcome to stay. Uh, you, we're not going to twist your arm to stay. You can stay for the rest of the meeting if you like. <laughs> or, or you can leave. Yeah. It's, it's entirely up to you guys. We, we certainly uh, welcome your participation. Okay. As far as uh, moving on to item 8, building permits, we've had two permits received uh, in the last little bit. One in Upper Kingsclear and one in Taylor Drive in Hanwell. Things should start picking up, I think, as, uh, as the winter progresses. Uh, <coughs> item 9, there's no proclamation for tonight. And item 10, there's no petitions or delegations. <coughs> and the <coughs> item 11A is the uh, business arising from the bylaw, a uh, bylaw respecting danger to on site premises. Um, if you guys want to take in their considerations and find out a little bit more information, then we could put it off until next month. If you wish. Yeah. We can move. We can move yeah. it to the next month if everybody's happy with that. And we'll see if we get more information out to the residents so they can be yes. uh, aware of what's going yes. on. Yeah. So I was going to add mm -hmm. also uh, even if you put a message on the sign. Post the information on the bulletin board, or, or just so people can come in and read it and see what it's all about. Yeah, we can do that, and we can get some maybe some copies of it out of some of the residences, like Shelton's and the uh, restaurants and whatnot around. Yeah, so it, people be well aware. Hopefully, simple. It doesn't co cost a lot of money. Just but people need to know what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Okay. That's the big thing. We can certainly do that. So we're going to move the. Uh, Item 11 on the on the bylaw 32 2024 to our next council meeting. If that's every all right with council, that's what you guys want to do. Could I just have a motion to table it? We don't really need to. because There's no motion right now to uh, on the floor, right? We just move to next month. On yeah, we will just take it off this week's or this month's agenda, and we'll add it on to February's. Yeah. If everybody's happy with March. that, we can to do March. that. March. March. Yeah. Oh, gosh. yeah. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> So item uh, B, C is the Kingwood's Wood uh, tax levy. That's the sewer tax on their, uh, what they pay for the tourism levy that goes on to the hotel. So, so no, council me. last month, um, I believe Doug Johnson came to attend your meeting. And they did some repairs to the sign that for the Radisson that is out on the highway. And he has provided us with the invoice. So if you would like to use some of the funds um, that we collect for the tax levy, then those funds could be used um, towards this. I'd personally like to have further discussion. We'll need a motion. You could motion on the phone. Yeah. We don't have a motion on the floor yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. But just as, as uh, information, this is the surtax that people pay. It's a 3% addition to the room rates that anybody that uh, <coughs> occupies a room at the resort out here, they pay an additional 3% that goes into a uh, tourism levy, or it's a tourism levy that goes into advanced tourism in the Hanwell area. So the province kicks that back to the owner? No, it comes straight directly from the owner of the hotel. You can't pay I move to suspend the rules so we can have a discussion prior to making a motion. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor of suspending the rules, please signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary mind? Okay, we'll now have the rules suspended so we can discuss this further. I'll start with comments. I'll start with Councillor Holt. I would just like to know a little bit more as far as the dollar figures, okay, in the essence. How much we've collected, how much they are collecting, um, again, just not carte blanche handing money over. Okay, 
we had some earlier discussion prior to meeting about about all this, all the funds, etc., where we can allocate the funds, etc. I would feel more comfortable knowing a little bit more <coughs> pertaining to where we can put those funds. Okay. Do you want me to speak? Okay. Councillor Fox. Yeah, I I would too. I'm, I mean, I echo Councillor Holt's um, comments, and I feel as though I would like to know a little bit more about this as well. My concern is that this seems to be routine business maintenance as opposed to a tourist um, putting money in towards tourism, and I don't think we should be subsidizing regular business maintenance. Um, business puts a sign up, they should maintain their sign. Um, and I don't see how it's, tour how it's tourism. Certainly it, it allows people to know that there's a hotel by the highway, but I mean, that's part of their business, that's part of their sign. To me, that's part of what they should be doing. It's not <coughs> tourism in terms of um, allowing people to know what exists in the community, what, what tourist activities can be done in the community. So. Um, until I have a better grasp on that, um, I would certainly not support this. Okay, Councillor Heisler. I have to agree with both Councillor Holt and Councillor Fox. I, my understanding, I had I mistakenly, was that there was a minimum that they could use towards tourism, but I've been told since that that's not necessarily the case. So I want, I need some clarification on exactly what or if there's a minimum that we need to give them in order to promote tourism. Okay. So I'd like more on that. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. I have no questions at all. Councillor Brinkler. Uh, I tend to agree with the councillors that have already spoke, but I would be interested to hear what's sitting in that account now, uh, similar to what Councillor Holt has done, <coughs> and uh, just what those are used for, and just expand on that. Okay, Councillor Gross. I have to agree with Councillor Fox and Holt as well. Great, thank you. Councillor McKenzie? pretty much agree with uh, what's going around the table. A couple additional questions on that because I have a memory of goldfish on it. It was discussed that this was due to um, like damage from something or was it just uh, like a routine maintenance? Because if it was damaged, wouldn't it be like an insurance claim from mm -hmm. like a storm or something like that? Or that would be covered? And if it's routine maintenance, then I'm not sure that that's the purpose that Tourism levies are normally supposed to be used for. I agree with the other councillors. Okay. okay. Councillor DeClaire. Yeah, I, I understand, you know, where the owner was coming from asking for the money. I get that, that the sign is helpful. I, I see the letter he wrote saying, you know, this is why the sign is important. However, I I tend to agree with everybody else. I we have a lot of businesses in the community. Now this may be the only one contributing to this kind of levy. I understand that, but um, I just don't want, want to set the wrong precedent, I guess, that, you know, we're helping with routine maintenance as opposed to um, other things. I think we could maybe redirect the money to other places with this, perhaps the same business. I'm not saying we don't support them at all. I'm just saying, like, maybe there's other things that we could be doing. Okay, so if it's Council's desire, uh, we'll move this off. Uh, uh, we'll find out more information, and we'll put it off until the next Council meeting. Or I can answer. Hmm? I have our figures I can answer. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of other questions they ask besides just figures. So we'll have to look into it, I think, a little further and we'll put it off to the next meeting. Is that Council's desire? Yeah, yeah. sure. Please. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, for the uh, Hamill Days Committee, we'll now strike the Hamill Days Committee. Thanks for coming, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, folks. <laughs> so we're going to strike a Hamble Days committee. I volunteered to chair it, and I believe all of council is going to sit on it, as far as I am aware. So we'll make that a, an ad hoc committee. And again, we can, uh, you know, if there's projects that desire or need the some volunteers for the community, the people that are looking after that part of the project can reach out to the community for volunteers. Mm -hmm.
I move to strike the Hamill Days Committee and have um, Mayor Dave Morrison as chair and the rest of council as members of the committee. Seconder? Okay. Any questions, comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, council. Correspondence committee. Oh, let's just, we'll, have, we'll have to clarify some things, like if you had, don't have a presentation, well, if you had a presentation, that's great, we, we'll listen to it, but as far as the ongoings on council, we don't solicit comments from the audience or anything at the time, so it's, it's not being mean or anything, that's just, just the way it goes, okay? Uh, correspondence, did we have any? No. So there's no correspondence, uh, meetings and special events, uh, we had the mayor's report, uh, I believe everybody's received that. Uh, can I get a motion to receive the report as presented? I move to receive the mayor's report as presented. Seconder? I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion carried. Thank you. <coughs> uh, committee reports. We have emergency measures committee report. So, Council, you were provided my emergency measures committee report. Um, we had a very good meeting. It was mostly to recap uh, the winter weather event when we had to open um, all of our shelters and stuff. So, we just uh, talked about what worked, what didn't work, and what might be needed. Um, there were a couple items that um, we probably should discuss in the future, which I'll bring forward at a later time, such as possible um, extra generators, the um, heaters that the fire department can take around to homes and stuff like that. And we did up a committee's future tasks of things that the committee can possibly do. So this report, as always, is on our website for anybody. And if there's any members of our public in this evening, we would love for any volunteers to join our emergency committee. So we meet once a month. It's the fourth Wednesday of every month. So. Our next meeting is on the 28th, just in case you'd like to attend. That's it? That's it. Okay, motion to receive the AMO committee's report. <coughs> I move to receive the committee report of January 24, 2024. Second. Second. Questions, comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion carried. Thank you, Council. <coughs> So we've got item 15. No, no. Nope. One we missed. We, this was added okay. last, yeah, late. So the rural plan review we have to add. Yes, okay. So we have a, uh, the rural plan review committee. It has that meeting if they, there's a report out there? Yeah. Everybody has it. Right here, short and sweet. You should have to. Can I do? I just think I just stuck it in there. Okay, can I get, get a motion to receive the Rural Plan Committee report? I move to receive the Rural Plan Committee. Seconder? All second. Any questions, comments? <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those in favor mind it. Motion carried. Thank you, Council. Now moving on to item 15, the CAO Treasurer's Report. Okay, so once again you have my CAO report. Um, the biggest item on my CAO report is that we are having a municipal by-election again, and it will be held on Monday, May the 6th. So due to publication deadlines, the election in New Brunswick must have a certified copy of the council resolution declaring a vacancy no later than Friday, March the 22nd. So if any of you plan on stepping down, I would need this for our next um, council meeting in March. For my treasurer's report, um, I will be doing a letter for the public and putting it on our website and social media um, as a breakdown of our budget compared from this year to last year. I've been doing it for a couple of years, so I will get that one um, out here soon. On social media, there was some comments made when they were talking about the budget, and a lot of people were recommending this property tax deferral program for seniors. Um, 
Just so people are aware, um, there is this deferred program. It's subject to a current annual interest rate of 4.23%. And if your family income is over 124178 the interest is 9.23%. So this isn't something that your taxes just get deferred. You're actually paying interest on it. So the deferred property tax and the interest amounts constitute as a lien against your property and become due and payable to the province when the property is either sold or transferred. So I was a little concerned when I saw those posts. It kind of made it sound like it was this great thing for seniors, but if you know of anybody that is thinking about it, I would strongly recommend that they research it because it's not just all sugar and spice, yeah, I guess. It, it just so. defers the tax and they are collected if the property sells. Yes. Yeah. So um, we have been receiving um, a lot of rights to information and protection of privacy requests. And then complaints have been going into the ombudsman. This has, back, I'm going to say probably 10, 15 years ago, we used to be able to charge um, when we did these requests. However, that charge, where municipalities are no longer allowed to charge applicants for them. But, um, it has been recommended that due to the number of them that we really should be tracking the cost. So um, in January, we worked on three complaints to the ombudsman, and then we also received three RTIPA requests. Some of this will also fall into the month of um, February. We always have 30 business days to complete these. So in January, uh, the cost was 48 hours total between staff, which is usually pretty well um, the clerk and I and um, one other uh, person. This doesn't include any of council's time, so the cost was $1,473.81 just for the month of January. February um, is going to be extensive. We have done a lot of... Um, time in the month of February so that was that one um, I just provided with you when I gave you the electronic copy of this I didn't provide you with your um, invoices these were larger budgeted expenses for the fire station I don't need um, approval on them because they were a budgeted amount but I wanted you to be able to see them so I have added them to your um, package. So the first one was LED lights and charges, um, chargers, sorry, so they were $6,300 and then a thermal imager and hoses and that was $13,029.50. So as per the, um, our bylaw, our purchasing policy, only non-budgeted payments over $5,000 request or require council's approval. So the only one that we had, um, there's an invoice here for the Morning Pride turnout gear, um, which is your jacket and pants. This is the fire department's bunker gear. We were hoping that we were going to be able to buy these last year, that they would, um, the invoice would be here before the end of December. So we transferred those funds over to our capital reserves. So tonight I just need you to make a motion to transfer those funds back from our capital reserves to general capital so that I can pay this. So the um, HST is not permitted to be paid out of capital reserves. So we will just make a contribution of only the 30000 and then we'll pay the balance out of this year. Okay, so I have given you um, the motion on that because it has to be specific wording. Be it resolved that the Council for the Rural Community of Panwell contribute from the General Capital Reserve Fund to the General Capital Fund $30,000 for the purchase of seven Morning Pride turnip gear jackets and pants. 
Seconder? I'll second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion carried. Thank you. Can I get a motion to accept the CEO of Treasurer's report as presented? Uh, a motion to accept the CEO of Treasurer's report as presented. Second. Questions? For the, no? <clears throat> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion carried. Thank you. I just have one more thing. Sorry. Oh. I have one more thing that I forgot. Oh, okay. Um, just a quick addition to the uh, Treasurer's report. Yeah. Sorry, Council. It's... I did up, um, we've had a couple of residents ask about how our solar panels are providing um, for power. So I have provided you a report. You have the summary. So I would like to read this so that it is out there publicly because there has been um, great controversy about our solar projects. So. The solar panels were installed on the roof of the municipal building in the fall of 2022. However, the new, um, the New Brunswick, sorry, I've got a typo there. The NB power meter was not activated in red until November the 7th of 2022. As you can see in the attached net metering summary, the consumption that was supplied by the solar panels in 2022 <coughs> was only 240 kilowatts an hour because that was only like the two months. During the winter months of January to April of 2023, snow covered the panels, therefore the consumption that was <coughs> supplied was zero. The beginning of the summer was extremely wet and overcast, so kilowatt hours supplied in May was about a fourth of the cost of our monthly bill. But as the summer progressed, it was more like half or all of our bill. For example, the month of August, our consumption used was 2,640 kilowatts, and the solar panels supplied 2,400. The fall of 2023 was about the same. It offset about half until we reached November, and to our latest summary report reading on February the 6th of 2024, in which it's once again covered in snow. So the pros, the system is working based on the totals during the summer if we had good weather. I mean, last summer the weather was not great. Cons, that the panels should be elevated slightly so that the snow um, falls off them easier. However, any additional brackets would need to be inspected by our roofing engineer to ensure the extra weight. And I have no idea what the cost would be. Um, if that is something that you would like for me to investigate, um, I certainly can and we can talk about that at maybe another meeting. Um, the cons, the consumption usage in our community hall is much higher than when we did the projections for the panels a couple of years ago. Um, due to the increase in rentals. So this would have an impact of the, the overall projection cost and savings. So a summary between November of 2022 to February 2024, we have consumed 123,720 kilowatts and solar panels offset only 12,240. So hopefully in 2024, we'll have a better understanding of the cost benefits for the solar project. So I just wanted to provide you with an update on that. So. Thanks, Ashley. It's great to know. Yes, certainly. That consumption is way higher than we projected originally, though. It's like, you would think, isn't the geothermal on that side? Or what's... So the geothermal is on this, this, side. this side, but um, we were not, like a couple of years ago when we did those projections, um, we never dreamt that yeah. our community hall would be rented out as much as it is. Like we are booked a lot, so like our air conditioning and our heat goes a fair amount. So um, it's just one of those one of those things between consumption and the weather. But yeah. like I said, hopefully this summer we'll maybe have a better, we certainly had a better winter. I wish that we had some way of raking off or brushing off the snow, but it's a little too dangerous on a metal roof to have yeah. staff going up there to 
quite the, the mocking the, too. So the heating on that side is it is it electric? Yeah, it's electric. That's what's causing the problem. I wonder if it might be a, a future project a better to have a look into getting a more more efficient heating system mm -hmm. to replace that on that side of the of the of the saw of the, the building because that's where the, the consumption's coming from. That's yeah, that's a very number. huge room to heat electrically. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> We'd be much better off with a with a heat pump system, like yeah, air to air to air. Even. Like a fifteen uh, ton. Anyway, it's not something, yeah, it's like something we can something talk about. Yeah, it was supposed to all be geothermal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we had yeah. we had planned for it, and I still don't understand yeah. what went wrong there. But I would really like to have the whole heating system in here. Um, we freeze most of the time. We use space heaters most of the time in the summertime in here. Kind of thing. So um, I'd like to have a whole heating system looked at. But that's another discussion. Yeah. Good. So we'll move on to item 16, Alder on finished business. Is there anything on the rec building or the rural plan progress report? I think we've already had a rural plan committee yeah. report. Yeah. So the recreation um, building, we are going to discuss that in the infrastructure and um, parks meeting. Okay, so item 17, new business, Yoho Park, anything to report there? So the only thing that we have mm -hmm. in that, um, the transfer from the Scouts Canada is supposed to be completed <coughs> by the lawyers for the end of February, and then we can start um, planning on hopefully clearing that property and getting a future park down there. So um, that will also be something that we can discuss at the infrastructure and parks meeting if we have that in place, if it's transferred by then. We certainly can, can do our planning because we <laughs> it's been coming for months yep. and years, but surely it's getting close. <coughs> Okay, so <clears throat> item 18 is the upcoming activities, which is Zoomers Mondays at 2 and Thursdays at 12. So that being so, we'll uh, move into closed session at item 19. And just to uh, refer you folks to the item, uh, closed session matters are not open to the public because they're of a financial nature or personal nature or HR nature or something along that line. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, we will uh, close, close the doors to the public and we'll uh, move into closed session. I'll escort you guys out in the meantime. And we'll come back and get a motion in the closed session. All right, can I have a motion to move into closed session, please? I move to go into closed session. Second it? I'll second it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary mind? Great, motion carried. We are now in closed session. Okay, you need a motion to come out of closed session? I move to come out of closed session and move back into open session. I'll second it. Any questions, comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary mind? Motion carried. Thank you. Do you want me to make this motion? Yes. I move to accept the quote from Greenfoot Energy Solutions in the amount of 26200 plus HST for four 24,000 BTU Daikin heat pumps for Station 1. I'll second it. Questions? Comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Motion carries. Thank you. So we need a motion to go back into closed session. Do you want to do do you want to extend the time first because... Yes. Probably should. Yeah, I'll motion to extend the meeting past 9 p.m. if needed. Second or? Second. Questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Motion there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, right now, Councillors uh, DeCleva, Krebs, and our clerk, Sherry Johnson, have left the Council Chambers due to a conflict of interest. So now we need a motion to go into closed session. I move to go into closed session. Seconder? No, seconder. Any questions, comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. We are now in closed session. Motion to come out of closed session and go into open session. Second. 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 Questions? Comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion carried. Thank you. Now we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. No second. Okay. Meeting adjourned at 9.20 p.m.